Romans chapter 8 Therefore there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus because through Christ Jesus the law of the spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of the sin and death for what the law was powerful to do because it was weakened by the flesh God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering and so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh but according to the spirit those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires but those who live in accordance with the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires the mind governed by the flesh is death but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace the mind and governed by the flesh is hostile to god it does not submit to god's law nor can it do so those who are in realm of the flesh cannot please god you however are not in the realm of the flesh but are in the realm of the spirit if you need the spirit of god lives in you and if anyone does not have the spirit of christ they do not belong to christ but if the christ is in you then even though your body is subject to death because of sin the spirit gives life because of righteousness and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you he who raised Christ from the dead will also give to you mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you therefore brothers and sisters we have obligation but it is not to the flesh to live according to it for if you live according to the flesh you will die but if the spirit you put to death the mind seeds of the body you will live for those who are led by the spirit of god are the children of god the spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again rather the spirit you received brought about the adoption of sonship and by him we cry abba father the spirit himself testifies with our spirits that we are god's children now if we are children then we are heirs heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ if in need it we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory i consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us for the creation waits in eager exception for the children of God to be revealed for the creation was subjected to fr- frustration not by its own choice but by the will of one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God we know that the whole creation has been groaning as in pains of childbirth rights up to the present time not only so but are we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit grown in wantly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship the redemption of our bodies for in hopes we are saved but hopes that is seen is no hope at all who hopes for what they already have but if we hope for what we do not yet have we wait for it patiently in the same way 
The Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And He who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance to the will of God. And we know. that in all the things God work for the good of those who love him who have called according to his purpose for those God for new he also presented to be continued to the image of his son that he might be the first born among many brothers and sisters and those who he presented he is also called those he called he also justified those he justified he will be glorified what they shall we say in response to these things if god is for us who can be against us he who do not spare his own son but he gave him up for us all who how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things who will bring any charge against those who God has chosen it is God who justifies who then is the one who condemns no one Christ Jesus who died more than that who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us who shall separate us from the love of Christ shall trouble or hardship or persecution of a mind or nakedness or danger or sword as it is written for your sake we face death all day long we are considered as sheep to be slaughtered no in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us for i am convinced that neither death nor life neither angels nor demons neither the present nor the future nor the any power neither height nor depth nor anything else in the creation will be able to separate us from the love of god that is in christ jesus our lord romans chapter 9 i speak the truth in christ i am not lying my conscience confirms it Through the Holy Spirit I have a great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart for I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my people those of my own race the people of Israel there is the adoption of sonship there the divine glory of covenants and the receiving of the law the temple worships and the promises there are the patriarchs and from there is traced the human and said tree of the messiah who is god over all who forever praised amen it is not as though god's word has failed for not all who have descended from israel are israel nor because they are his descendants they all abraham's children on the contrary it is isaac though isaac that your offspring will be reckoned in the other words it is not the children by physically descended who are god's children but it is the children of the promise who are regarded as abraham's offspring for was how the promise was stated at the appointed time i will return and sarah have will have a son not only that but rebecca's children will conceived at the same time by our father isaac yet before the twins were born or had uh, had done not anything good or bad in words that God's purpose in the election might stand not by work but by him who calls she was told the older will serve the younger just as it is written 
Jacob I loved, but he so hated. What shall we say? Is God unjust? Not at all, for he says to Moses, "I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion." It does not, therefore, depend on human desire or effort, but on God's mercy. From Scripture to Pharaoh, I raised you up for this very purpose. that i might display my power in you and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth therefore god has mercy on whom he wants to have mercy and he hardens whom he wants to harden one of you will say to me that who does not still blame us for who is able to resist his will but who are you a human being to talk back to god shall what is formed say to the, the one and who formed it why did you make me like this does not to potter have the right to make out the same lump of clay some pottery of special purpose and some for common use what if god also chosen to show his wrath and make his power known bore with great patience and the object of the wrath prepared for destruction what if he did to make the riches of his glory known to the object of the mercy whom he prepared in advice for glory even us whom he also called not only from the jews but also from the gentiles as he says to hosea i will call them my people who are not my people and i will call her my loved one but who is not my loved one and in the very place very where i said to them you are not my people they will be called children of the living god as i cries out concerning israel though the number of the israelites be like the sand by the sea only the remnant will be saved for the lord will carry out a sentence on earth with speed and finality it is just as isaiah said previously unless the lord almighty had left us the sentence we would have become like soda we would have become like go more what then shall we say that the gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have obtained it a righteousness that is by faith but the people of israel who pursued the law as the way of righteousness have to not attend it the goal why not because they pursued it not by faith but as if they were by work they stumbled over the stumbling stone as it is written see i lay in zion a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall and the one who believes in him will never be put to shame Romans chapter 10 Brothers and sisters my heart desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved for I can testify about them that they are zealous for God but their zeal is not based on knowledge since they did not know the righteousness of God and so to establish their rule they did not submit to God's righteousness Christ is accumulation of the law so that they may be righteous for everyone who believes. Moses writes this about the righteousness that by the law on the person who does these things who live by them but the righteousness that by faith says do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven that is to bring Christ down 
or who will descend into the deep, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in you, your mouth, in your heart. That is the message concerning faith by that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe that in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and justify, and it is with you, your mouth, that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame, for there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord as Lord of all the rich, he blesses all who call on him, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How they can they call on the one they have not believed in, and how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how someone can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But not all the Israelites accept for the good news for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our messages constantly faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word about christ but i did not uh, ask that here of course they did their voice has gone out into all the earth their words to this end of the world again i ask did Israel not understand? First, Moses says, I will make your envious by those who are not a nation. I will make you angry by a nation that has no understanding. And Isaiah boldly says, I was found by those who did not seek me. I reveal myself to those who did not ask for me. But concerning Israel, he says, all day long I have held out of my hands to be disobeyed and obese in people. Romans chapter 11 I asked them, did God reject his people? By no means. I am an Israelite myself, a descendant of Abraham, from the tribe of Benjamin. God did not reject his people whom he foreknew. Don't you know what scripture says in the passage about Elijah? How he appealed to God against Israel. Lord, they have killed your prophets and torn down your altar. I am the only one left and they are trying to kill me. And what was God's answer to him? I have reserved for myself 7,000 who have not bowed the knee of Baal. So, too, at the present time, there is a man chose by God, and if by grace they, it cannot be based on works, if it were grace, would no longer be grace. What then? What the people of Israel sought of earnestly they did not obtain, the elect among them did, but the others were hearted, as it is written. God gave them a scripture of stuffer eyes that could not see and ears that could not hear to this very day. And David says, May their tables become a snare and a trap, a stumbling block and a retribution for them. May their eyes be darkened so they cannot see, and their backs be bent forever. Again I ask, did they stumble so as to fall beyond recovery? Not at all. Rather, because of their transgressions, salvation has come to the Gentiles to make Israel envious. But if their transgressions means riches for the world and their loss means riches for the Gentiles, how much greater riches will their full inclusion bring? I am talking to you Gentiles in as much um, 
I am an apostle to the Gentiles. I take pride in my ministry in the hope that I may somehow arouse my own people to envy and save some of them. For it is their rejection brought reconciliation to the world. What will their acceptance be but life from the dead? If the part of the dove offered as first fruits is holy, then the whole batch is holy. If the root is holy, so are the branches. If some of the branches have been broken off and you, though a wild olive shoot, have been grafted in among the others and now share in the nourishing sap from the olive roots, do not consider yourself to be superior to those other branches. If you do consider this, you do not support the roots, but the roots support you. You will say then, branches were broken off so that I could be grafted in. Granted, by they were broken off because of unbelief and you stand by faith. Do not be arrogant, but tremble. For if God does not spare the natural branches, he will not spare you either. Consider, therefore, the kindness of sternness of God, sternness is to those who fell, but kindness to you provided that you continue in his kindness, otherwise you also will be cut off, and if they do not persist in unbelief, they will be granted, for God is able to graft them in again. After all, if you were cut out of an olive tree, that is wild by nature and contrary to nature were grafted into a cultivated olive tree how much more readily will these the natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree i do not want to be inorganic of my mystery brothers and sisters so that you may not be consited Israel has experienced a hardening in part until the full number of Gentiles has come in. And in this way, all Israel will be saved as it is written. The deliverer will come from Zion. He will turn goodness away from Jacob. And this is my covenant with them. I will, I will when I take away from their sins. As... For the gospel is concerned, they are enemies for your sake, but as for an election is concerned, they are loved on account to the patriarchs. For God's gifts and calls in irrecoverable, just as you who were at once disobeyed to God have now received mercy as a result of their disobedience, so they have too now become disobedient in order that they too may now receive mercy as a result of God's mercy to you. For God has bounced everyone over the disobedience so that he may have mercy on all of them. On the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable is judgment and his path beyond tracing out whom has known the mind of the Lord or whom has been in counselor who has ever given to God that God should repay them from for now from him and though him and for him are all things to be the glory forever amen Romans chapter 12 Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and your proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God will is his good pleasing and perfect will. For by his grace given me, I say to every one of you, 
do not think of yourself more highly than you ought but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith god has disturbed to each of you for just as each of you has ba- one body with many members and these members do not all have the same function so in christ we offer many from one body and each member belong to all the other we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us it is your gift of prophesying then prophecy in accordance with your faith if it is give encouragement if it is giving then giving generously if it is led to de- diligent if it is to show mercy to do it cheerfully love must be sincere hate what is evil cling to what is good be devoted to one another in love honor one another above yourself never be lacking in zeal but keep your spiritual fervor serving the lord be joyful in hope patient in affliction faithful in prayer share with the lord's people who are in need practice hospitality bless those who persecute you and bless do not curse rejoice with those who rejoice mourn with those who mourn live in harmony with one another do not be brave, proud be but willing to associate with people of low position do not be conceited Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eye of everyone. If it is possible as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, "It is mine to avenge, I will repay," says that the law on the contrary. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he if he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good.